Okay, in this, in this video, we are going to look at rotational motion, um, and specifically the math tools that we will need to analyze objects that are rotating. So um, let's first talk about, before we dive into the math, let's first, first talk about how rotational motion differs from the motion, the other types of motion we've been talking about thus far in this class. So um, we started out by looking at things traveling in a straight line. So we had like a box being pushed along the ground or something to that nature. We have um, an object just moving. Um, or we looked at a ball maybe flying through space. Okay, but in all these cases, we just assumed that the object was just translating. That means it's not so this is called translation. That means the object is not rotating. It's just kind of moving and um, not rotating about an axis as it's moving through space. However, we know like when we throw a baseball or we, th we shoot a basketball, we know that oh, that's a terrible ball. Okay, so we know if we shoot a basketball, it's also usually rotating about an axis. Okay, so um, if we have a ball, here's our basketball, and it's rotating around an axis in the middle of the ball. This ball is said to be also not only translating, but it's also rotating. Okay. Okay. Rotation, an object is rotating um, if it has motion around an, an axis. Okay, so like for this basketball, the axis of rotation is straight through the middle of the ball. So the axis is just the axis um, that it's rotating around. Okay, we can also have, so this is this example of the basketball moving through space. It's flying through space and also rotating. So it has rotation, but it also has translational motion. Okay, so this is, a, this is an example of an object that's translating and rotating. But we could also have an object like a ceiling fan or something like that. This is a terrible ceiling fan, but you guys will. Ceiling fan or a turbine. And it is rotating. But not moving um, through space. So this is an example of just tr tr rotation without any translation. Okay. Um, so those are kind of we've in the past in this class looked at kind of just this situation now we'll be looking at both this and this situation where objects are rotating and translating or just rotating okay so let's delve into the math tools we are going to need for this okay so um typically when um we're thinking about um angles okay when an object moves through a certain angle. A lot of times we um, talk about how many degrees. Okay, so we know like in a circle, okay, if we have an angle that looks like this, this would be a 90 degree angle. Okay, or if we have an object um, that travels, okay, this way, that would be 180 degrees. Okay, we got 270 if we get all the way to here. And then if we go all the way around the circle, if we make a trip all the way around the circle, that is 360 degrees. Okay, so we are used to using degrees. I think everybody is pretty, pretty comfortable with that. Um, and I know y'all have also been introduced to radians, but let's review because we're going to be using radians quite a bit here. Okay. Um, so radians are, um, come from, um, kind of the definition of one radian is going to be, okay, so let's say we have a radius R in this circle, okay, one radian is going to be the angle you need to travel through, so this arc length right here, okay, so we have our angle theta in radians, okay, one, in, when you travel one radian, okay, S equals R, okay, so that, that angle theta is going to equal 
S over R. And when S and R are equal, okay, then you get um, theta is one radian. Okay, so that is actually the definition of radians. And you may remember um, from math class, okay, if you travel 90 degrees, okay, that angle here, theta is going to be pi over 2. Okay, the angle, let me change colors here. If we go 180 degrees, that's going to be just pi. Okay, we go 270, that's 3 pi over 2. Okay, and if we make our way all the way around the circle, go all the way around the circle, that's going to equal 2 pi radians. Okay, so essentially what that means is um, pi is a little over 3. Okay, so to get to 180, you would need basically... Um, S, I think the circumference is um, basically 3.1, 3.14 of these S arc lengths. So one, two, three, we can try it out. And then there would be a little bit left, 0.14 of an arc length left of that S arc length right here. So one, two, three. 0.14, okay, to get to here. That was kind of weird. I mean, each of these are one. Um, our length S equals one, so to say, if we're looking looking at um, the 180 equaling pi. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, so, so our definition, to simplify, just our definition um, of the radian comes from from this relationship right here. Um, when S equals R, you have one radian. Okay, so we when we compare, um, when we compare, we know that 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians. Okay, so let's let's just take a look at how do we convert between radians and degrees. So we said we know that um, 360 degrees equals two pi radians, and a lot of times you don't need to write the units, um, but we'll just say 360 equals 2 pi. So if we were converting from degrees to radians, okay, so degrees to radians is what we're asked to do in this first example problem, okay, 48 degrees in radians, we know um, that we have a number in degrees, and we can just use our, our relationship here and we could actually simplify that, 180 equals pi, right? Um, divide both sides by 2. Well, we want to convert two radians, so let's put pi in the numerator and 180 in the denominator. Okay, and we multiply it out and reduce. We have 4 pi over 15 radians would be the answer to that, that problem. We take 48 times pi, divide by 180, and we simplify it. Um, it gives us 4 pi over 15. And a lot of times when you're dealing in radians, you leave, you leave the pi in there and kind of simplify with, with the pi. You can multiply it out if you want, um, but I like to kind of just keep it um, as pi until the very end. Okay. Um, but what, what happens if we were going the other way? So we have 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay, well now we want to go 2 degrees. Um, so we're going from radians to degrees in this problem. So we want degrees in our numerator, 180 degrees over pi. Okay, well, my pi's cancel out. Take 3 times 180 and divide by 2, and I get 270 degrees. Okay, so those are just two simple problems looking at using our understanding of the relationship bet between degrees and radians to convert between degrees and radians. Okay, well, let's look at, we, we started the video by talking about motion in a circle or objects that are rotating. Um, let's look at um, a, uh, something that might be useful when we're looking at um, motion in 
that's motion of an object that's rotating. So if we have, um, and we're going to be dealing in, in radians here, um, if we have, uh, let's say we have, okay, um, an object that, that rotates um, through uh, theta degrees, okay, so at, at time equals one, it starts here, one second, and let's just say at time equals 1.5 seconds, it is rotated um, through um, theta radians. Okay, so it's rotating around, um, this right here is our axis of rotation. Okay, so where the object is rotating around. Okay, well we can talk about angular displacement. Okay, angular displacement is just going to be the change in our, um, our, our, our angle. Okay, so if we were to look at this spot at time e time two, call this time one and time two. So theta two would be um, the angle here, theta. Okay. Okay, and at time equals one, theta one equals zero. Okay, if we, just because of how I've drawn this. Um, when we're looking at, at um, Mathematically, um, like looking at angles, remember we start with the positive x is, is zero degrees, and then a, a counterclockwise rotation is positive angles, and that's true in radians and degrees. Okay, so um, if we take our change in theta, theta two minus theta one, okay, that is gonna be our angular displacement. Okay, so that's pretty simple here. Um, we've set this, this problem up so that our theta 1 equals 0. So it's just basically whatever this angle theta is that we rotated through. That's going to be theta 2. Okay, so delta theta is what we use for angular displacement. Just like delta x is our change in position, del delta theta is our change in our angle. Or our angle, angular displacement. Okay, so if we look at um, this situation and we, we want to think about velocity, well, velocity is just a change in position over a change in time. And we've been used to translation where we, where we call our change in position as x, but here we're looking at an angular change. Um, so it would be, or angular displacement, so it would be delta theta over t is going to equal our angular velocity. Okay, so we would take, let's say theta 2, um, let's say it was 1.1 radians, okay, or something like that. So we would take 1.1 divided by, well, 1.1 minus 0, right, let's be, so theta 2 minus theta 1 divided by our change in time. Well, 1.5 minus 1, okay, so we get 1.1 divided by 0.5 uh, radians per second. Which is what, like 2.2 uh, radians per second. Okay, so um, there we have angular displacement and angular velocity definitions. Okay. Um, but what if we wanted to um, look at, so what if we wanted to look at the, the translational velocity of this object, right? Because it is also moving through space. It's also translating. It's not only rotating. If we were to look at just this spot on our, if it's an object or if it's a point, what, whatever it is, if we were to look at that spot and, and look at its actual velocity, translational velocity, Okay, we know translational velocity is equal to the change, um, our change in position over our change in time. Okay, um, well, we do know that our uh, 
we have a circle here and we move through and we move through a certain angle here okay we actually know this arc length here so if we know how far we traveled um, by looking at our our arc length s okay we said that s um, well we said we said theta equals s over r so r times theta equals s so if we take our theta and then in this case it's it's delta theta that we've moved through our change in theta times r we get our arc length okay so if we have actually let's move this over here i'm going to run out of space so i said v equals s over delta t that's our translational now looking at translational velocity our v okay like we've been doing kind of all class all all semester okay but we have another equation for s delta theta times r divided by delta t okay well our delta delta theta divided by delta t we just define that as our omega our angular velocity so our translational velocity is equal to our angular velocity times times r okay so v equals so there's a relationship between the angular velocity and and the translational velocity okay of that point moving moving um rotating but also moving through space translating through space okay so let's go down here and do a practice problem with this um so what is the angular velocity in radians per second of a fan that rotate rotates three times a second okay um so we have a fan and it's rotating around the center here again it looks more like a flower than a fan but just go, roll with me here okay we know that it rotates three times in every second okay so let's say i mean we, I, we just went over that um one time around the circle is is two pi but let's say for some reason we forgot that you know 360 degrees is two pi and let's say that we just remember 360 degrees so let's take 360 times three okay we're gonna find we're gonna find the angle theta that it's moved moved through okay if it goes three times around the circle so this will be in degrees and then we said to to convert from from degrees to radians we need to multiply by pi over 180. okay so if we take 360 times three divided by 180 times pi okay we will end up with six pi okay so we know that our change in theta for um three rotations is going to be six pi okay and we're trying to find the angular velocity so we have change in theta over the amount of time well in this case we just have six pi over one second so six pi radians per second okay but let's say we wanted to know now the the velocity the tangential velocity of a point of a point that is what would be reasonable here let's say it is 0.3 meters from the the center of the fan or the axis of rotation of the fan and we want to define what is the velocity of this point this tip of one of the blades of the fan okay so we just defined in this um, previously previous section we said velocity equals omega times r okay um so velocity equals omega times r so all we would need to do is we need to take that six pi and multiply it by 0 0.3 okay so that would be 1.8 pi okay so 1.8 pi and now that is converted to meters per second for us 